This is uh, Pace Turf Interviews with the Experts, and we're going to be talking with Micah Woods, one of our favorite experts to talk with, and we're going to be discussing uh, light and turf performance, and you can see this green on the bottom doesn't look like it's doing too well, uh, even though it's in a warm environment. So, Micah, maybe you can give us an idea why you think turf performance is so linked to sunlight. Well, Larry, um, as I came to work in Asia, I discovered that the Bermuda grasses that work so well in the southern United States, in many parts of the southern United States, didn't seem to be performing so well in Asia. And I was shocked by seeing things like we see on this putting green here, where that's a, a tiff dwarf putting green that's been 50% taken over by zoysia grass. So, and the grass that's green and healthy there is zoysia. The grass that has algae on it and is very thin is Bermuda. And it's very hot, warm, tropical in, uh, this is actually in Manila where that picture is taken. And I started wondering why, why is the Bermuda not performing so well? And I guess you, you sent me another photo that, that uh, you're telling me this is, might be the cause. That's what the, you know, I, I used to come on holiday in Asia and I'd go to the beach and it'd be sunny and yeah, I'd go play golf, it'd be sunny. And I was, I was thinking it would sunny, but as I lived here for longer and traveled around more of the region, I saw a lot of this kind of weather. And I said, hey, there's a, a large part of the year where there's low cloud cl cover, extensive cloud cover, cloud cover all day. And I started thinking there must be something going on with the light um the, it's just not that sunny uh so, in in many parts of asia so what did you do to start sort of looking at it? you showed me some of these um uh, some of these i oh, will put one up we, one of these bubble plots that um you know it's got something about temperature i stumbled i stumbled across this larry i i always look at the weather and and we'd see okay the high temperature is this the relative humidity is this the low temperature is that dew point um rainfall here's what the forecast is. I did not know that the sunshine hours were actually measured. And I was looking through data trying to understand how grass might grow in different areas. And I, and I discovered that uh, there's actually measured sunshine hours through uh, many weather stations across the world. So once I got that, I said, hey, let's plot that. And if we plot, this shows uh, sunshine hours on the y-axis, the vertical axis and the temperature on the, uh, the x-axis, the horizontal axis. And if we do that, we can look at it in two dimensions. So it's the, 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 the areas are not just separated by how much uh, uh, the temperature differs, but also by how much the sunlight differs. And then you've, got, you've also got rainfall by the size of the dot. Right, the well that, that puts it into three dimensions. The size, each of those dots or bubbles is, is the, uh, the weather data for a particular city. So it's the combination of temperature and light and rainfall. Um, so the size is rainfall, but the location on the plot is, uh, is the combination of temperature and uh, sunshine hours. And if you'll go to the next slide there, you'll see there's this weird separation where the, the cities I plotted from North America are all above that blue line and the cities from Asia are all below that line. So originally I was just trying to compare what about the cities in Asia and what about in the U.S.? The Honolulu is kind of out there in the middle. Uh, well, it's still above the blue line, Larry. <laughs> that blue line is powerful. Right, so yeah, you did. Yeah. So you got yeah, this, there's, this sort of a... There's a separation. Okay. So the general trend is the cities in Asia on an annual basis if they're below that line, that means less sunshine hours. And if they're above that line, it means uh, a more sunshine. And so I discovered, hey, the, da the actual data, this is from a, a, a data set from the World Meteorological Organization. Um, they actually confirm what I'd kind of sensed and what I'd observed and what golf course superintendents have been telling me around Asia is it really does rain a lot here. It really is cloudy right. here. Right. Well, and that's and that's what the turfs were telling you too. That's what you were reading when you're seeing the biology of the system uh, and the competition, which is a really great way to evaluate a, an ecosystem is to look at the which uh, species are are competing and doing the best. So it's really telling you what's going on. So that, that and this 
But yeah, it was it was cool to stumble across the data that supported what we see out in the field. Like, why does Bermuda get so many weeds here? Why uh, does Bermuda struggle so much during the rainy season? Why does zoysia grass, once it comes into an area, spread and spread and spread and eventually take over the, the Bermuda grass? Right, and so, you, so I expanded right. it. Um, if we look at what... Uh, what affects plant growth? If, if we look at a model of uh, how, basically a model of photosynthesis, it's affected by light, it's affected by temperature, it's affected by water, and it's affected by the nitrogen status of the plant. And golf course superintendents or turf grass managers, they can control the amount of nitrogen. And theoretically, through drainage systems and through irrigation, they're they're able to control the water status, but they pretty much can control the temperature and um, there's very little that they can do to control the light. So by plot, by looking up this data and then plotting the data in this way, it, I find it's really useful to look at the things that the turf grass manager cannot control and say, okay, this is how the weather uh, at this time of the year may be affecting the grass and here's how we should we should plan accordingly. So this is kind of a starting point for all kinds of cool modeling stuff that I want to do about uh, predicting uh, how grass may perform in certain areas. Perfect. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap that up for now as a teaser for everybody to come back and see the uh, uh, next, uh, next expert uh, talk with Micah and we'll be looking at uh, some moving charts in the next one we'll that's right look how these moves, all of these are interactive during the year it's awesome very nice all right well micah thank you for your time and we look forward to the next interview all right thank you thank you very much larry